Are you ready to talk about Panthera? You see, some people try to lump in other large cats such as cheetahs and cougars as big cats, but we are sticking with the traditional definition of big cats being members of the genus Panthera. Hashtag trad cats. So let's get to talking about the five members of Panthera. Jaguars, leopards, snow leopards, lions, and tigers. Oh my. <laughs> First up, we got the Jaguar or Jaguar if your country cannot settle on a single measurement system. Their original name is Yaguara, which comes from the Tupi Guarani family of languages, as do the words tapioca and petunia. The Jaguar is the third largest big cat, ranging from 80 to 300 pounds and about 4 foot long to 6 foot long, not counting the tail. The largest recorded Jaguar weighed 328 pounds. Their range goes from the southwestern US down throughout Central America and into northern South America. Historically, they had a much larger range going further north into the US and as far east as Louisiana and covering most of Central and South America down to about the mid midway point of Argentina. Having said that, some of you may be surprised at the inclusion of the US in their territory. They were fairly common in their original range, but many were killed during Western expansion until they became locally extinct. Recently though, they have started coming back on their own by crossing over the border from Mexico. There are growing populations in New Mexico and Arizona, and their conservation is being monitored by US Fish and Wildlife south of Interstate 10. As recently as the 90s, there were eight subspecies of jaguars in the world, but now there's just one. Because genetic testing has shown that jaguars are not different enough to have subspecies. Jaguars usually live to be 12 to 15 years old, although one jaguar in a zoo in Croatia lived to be 29 years old. Jaguars were often used as a symbol in religions in the Americas prior to colonization. Art of jaguars has been found from civilizations in Peru to the Mayans to the Anasazi to the mound builders in Missouri. In the additional reading section, I put an interesting article about why the mound builders had jaguar art. Famously, jaguars also come in the limited edition skin known as Black Panthers. Their lovely blackness is caused by an inherited trait called melanism, which is kind of the opposite of albinism. In melanism, there is more melanin than normal. In albinism, there is an absence of melanin. Something that makes jaguars not like the other cats is how they kill their prey. See, other cats kill their prey by biting the neck of the other animal. Jaguars, on the other hand, have the strongest jaws amongst cats, which allows them to kill their prey by biting their head and crushing it. This also allows them to include turtles in their diet. They also eat pretty much any other animal they find, including everything from the capybara to the caiman to the deer. Jaguars are also good swimmers, which makes sense because they live in the rainforest. They have even been documented swimming to catch fish. Interestingly, they are not generally aggressive towards humans. The first officially documented fatal jaguar attack in Brazil happened in 2008. I also found a study that found that from 2010 to 2021, there were only five attacks in Brazil. All of these were non-fatal, and all were from the jaguar being surprised when someone got close to their food or their babies. Jaguars are considered near-threatened. They are dealing with habitat loss, poaching, and conflicts with humans. Pretty much all large predators face some level of threat from conflict with humans. Common examples are them coming into urban areas and having to be put down, or being shot for preying on livestock. Hunting jaguars has banned in much of their range, and there are a number of sanctuaries set up for them. Their total population is believed to have declined in recent years, although it is growing in Mexico and the US. Next up, we got spotted boy number two, the leopard. Leopards are the smallest of the big cats. They normally range from 46 to 165 pounds, and three to six feet long, not counting the tail. They are very slender compared to other big cats. They are kind of twinkish. They live to be 12 to 17 years old, and one female black leopard in Texas named Raven lived to be 25. Let's have the spot conversation. You can tell the difference between leopards and jaguars by the fact that leopard rosettes are made of closely packed dots, where the jaguars are a bit looser and have a dot in the middle of the rosette. The markings are a form of camouflage. When they move through the forest in the shadows, the spots help break up their form. There can also be melanistic leopards, just like there are jaguars, and they are also called black panthers. If you run into a spotted cat in the wild, you can tell the difference because they don't live on the same continent. The leopard is native to Africa and Asia. Also, I went down the rabbit hole of why is leopard print considered trashy? Wearing leopard was often a sign of royalty, and in the 20th century, when fabric printing became easier, leopard print became popular. Dior had an old leopard print show in the 40s, and Jackie Kennedy often wore it, as did other members of high society. It seems like it started as a symbol for women's empowerment, and then Hollywood put every character that is supposed to be a slutty mom in leopard print. Eventually, this lowered its perceived status. Throughout their range, leopards generally prefer to eat whatever grazing animals are around, although they have been known to eat everything from jackals to birds to dung beetles. There are nine living subspecies of leopard according to DNA testing. In case you are wondering how the testing works, here is a quick simplified explanation. The mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. 
The DNA in your mitochondria is most likely identical to the DNA in the mitochondria of your mother and grandmother. It usually takes many generations for any real changes to occur, and this fact can be used to find if populations of animals have grown apart. The most common subspecies is the African leopard, which is the one you see in the nature documentaries eating gazelles in the trees of the savanna. There is also the Arabian leopard, which lives on the Arabian Peninsula and is the smallest leopard. There is also the Indian leopard that lives in India, Bangladesh, Nepal, and Bhutan, and has a smaller frame than the African leopard, but is generally more muscular. There's the Sri Lankan leopard, which is just in Sri Lanka, and has an interesting feeding habit. One of the things lepers are known for is that they take their kill up in the tree to eat it. The Sri Lankan leopard does not bother with this because there aren't any other predators there that are big enough to bother it. There is the Indo-Chinese leopard that lives in Southeast Asia and Southern China. The skinny part of Thailand is called the Kra Isthmus. In a study, all of the leopards found south of this isthmus were black, possibly because it helps them blend in better in the dense jungles in that area. The Java leopard lives on just the island of Java. Interestingly, Sumatra and Borneo sit between Java and the mainland, but neither of those islands are believed to have had leopard populations in many thousands of years, possibly due to predators living on those islands. Also, before you come at me, yes, they have clouded leopards. That is not the same thing. Look at it. I have seen house cats bigger than the clouded leopard. The North Chinese leopard lives in northern China. Their special trait is that their rosettes are just black spots. The Amur leopard lives along the Russia and China border just above North Korea. They are believed to be the rarest big cat with right around 100 of them left in the wild. It is believed that most of the population is in Russia, although there might also be a few in North Korea. I wonder if they like Dennis Rodman. And lastly, the Persian leopard. It ranges from Turkey to Pakistan. It's even in Balochistan. The Persian leopard is also the largest subspecies, getting up to 6 feet long and 155 pounds. Leopards are kind of in the middle as far as attacks on humans go. They attack more than jags and snow leopards, but not as many as lions and tigers. Despite being all over the place, they only attack about 50 people a year, and because they are kind of scrawny, there have been quite a few cases of human beings beating leopards in fights, even the elderly. Leopards are considered vulnerable as a whole, but certain subspecies such as the Amur leopard are critically endangered. Next up, we got the snow leopard. They are also commonly called the ounce. This apparently comes from the word once, which is an old French word for lynx. Whatever Frenchmen decided to call them that must have had too much wine because they don't really look alike. They lived to be 15 to 18 years old in the wild, and one snow leopard lived to be 26 years old in a Tokyo Zoo. They live in the mountainous areas of Central Asia from the Himalayas up through China and Mongolia to Siberia. Until recently, the snow leopard was not considered to have subspecies, but some DNA testing has shown that the species can be broken up into subspecies by whether they are in the northern, western, or central populations. This is apparently somewhat controversial though, as the differences between them are small. Another thing DNA testing has told us about snow leopards is that their closest living relative is actually the tiger. Since they live high in the mountains, their diet is a bit more limited than that of other big cats. They can get ibex and a goat-like animal called the tar, but also end up eating a lot of smaller animals like rodents and birds. In a way, the snow leopard is a paradoxical leopard, as it is neither smaller nor bigger than the normal leopard. Female snow leopards are usually 77 pounds to 88 pounds, where the regular female leopards are 46 to 132 pounds. Males are 99 pounds, up to the biggest known wild snow leopard named the Dude, who weighs 119 pounds. Male regular leopards are 80 pounds and up to one leopard recorded in South Africa that was 212 pounds. This illustrates the differences between an animal like the snow leopard that lives in one general region versus the regular leopard that covers a large chunk of the earth. The normal leopard has evolved to various environments leading to a much larger difference between different populations, where the snow leopard is fairly uniform. That means that with things like climate change or disease, we are much more likely to hold on to something like the leopard than the snow leopard since it's much more likely that at least one subspecies can adapt. Agriculture has found this out time and time again. The Irish potato famine was partially due to the near universal use of the Irish lumper variety of potato. As soon as one disease was able to kill them, it wiped out all the potatoes in the area. A similar thing happened with the Gros Michel banana that the artificial banana flavor is based on. They have a number of cold weather adaptations, including fur that can be close to 5 inches thick and a very stocky build. Having shorter limbs is an advantage in colder climates as it helps conserve heat since it reduces the amount of blood circulating outside of the animal's core. My favorite feature of theirs is that they have a very fat tail and it is used to store fat and keep their face warm when they sleep. Interestingly, they are the only member of Panthera that cannot roar. This is because their vocal folds are too short. Due to them living in the mountains, they are excellent jumpers and climbers. They also have big paws for their size, and that helps them keep on top of the snow like snowshoes. They are also the least aggressive of the big cats. The only confirmed attack on humans was by a toothless rabid one in Kyrgyzstan. They are listed as a vulnerable species. They are facing threats from habitat loss and poaching for use in traditional medicine. 
assure you that I ain't lying when I say the next cat is the lion. You already know that they live in groups called prides. What you may not have realized is that they are the only big cat that lives in groups. As far as I can find, the only other feline that lives in groups are feral house cats. Lions are considered to have two subspecies, the northern lion and the southern lion. This is confusing because the northern lion is in Western Africa, Central Africa, and India. Historically, there were lions in Northern Africa, but they were wiped out by the 60s. The lions that live in India are also known as Asiatic lions. Historically, their range went from India across the Middle East to Turkey and possibly into Europe. It is very possible that the lions in Greek mythology would have been inspired by Asiatic lions. Today, they just live in Gur National Park in India. Lions are our biggest kitties yet. The female lion is usually about 5 to 6 feet long without the tail and 240 to 315 pounds. The males are usually 6 to 7 feet long without the tail and range from 350 to 500 pounds. There was a male at the Dublin Zoo in the 50s that got up to 827 pounds. These southern lions are a bit bigger than the northern ones and also live in bigger groups and generally have larger manes. The females do the bulk of the hunting while the males stay home and protect the turf. Males sometimes do help with the hunting if they have a chance at a big score like a water buffalo or an elephant. The diet of lions is mostly the large animals in their area like wildebeest and gazelle plus little stuff like rodents and lizards they find by chance. Let's talk about their defining feature though. Their sweet do. The working theory for why male lions have manes is the stunt for the girls. Not all male lions have manes though. Males that have been seriously injured or castrated will lose their mane. There are also some populations of lions that just don't grow them. This is where two of the most famous lions in history lived. They were known as the Savo Maneaters. In 1889, a railroad was being built from Uganda to the Kenyan port of Mombasa. Two male lions began to take workers from their tents in the night. Between March and December of that year, the two lions were believed to have killed somewhere between a few dozen and over 100 men. The workers tried everything at their disposal. They built walls, they had lookouts, but men were still being dragged into the brush to never be seen again. The lions were eventually killed by John Henry Patterson, who was hired by the rail company to kill them. John Henry Patterson is also the most British man I've ever seen in my life. The Savo man-eaters are on exhibit as taxidermy at the Fields Museum in Chicago. And look, they have no manes. It is possible that these two started eating so many people due to a virus called Rinderpest, killing off many of the herbivores in the area. It may have also had to do with one of the lions having an infected tooth, which would have made hunting hard. Although humans are not a main food source for lions, they do attack somewhat often. Record keeping seems inconsistent, but the most common number I saw was around 200 people killed by lions per year. That said, don't think of lions as horrible monsters or anything. Deer also kill about 200 people a year in just the US. A big part of the lion's large kill count on humans is where they live. Animal attacks are more common in poorer parts of the world due to lack of infrastructure. Due to centuries of exploitation by Western powers, the residents of places like Africa and India are more likely to live in undeveloped areas. This leads to a higher risk of deadly encounters with animals. And before I get some dumbass in the comments going on about how they go camping all the time and haven't gotten eaten, there is a huge difference between an established campsite or hiking trail at a state or national park and walking through the actual middle of nowhere. The noise from all the people at a busy camp is a huge deterrent to animals coming near the campers there. Anytime you go in the backwoods, there's a possibility of an animal encounter, and many people in places like Africa and India have to do it just to get water. Just to be clear, not all of Africa and India have this issue. Places like Lagos, Nairobi, Johannesburg, Delhi, and Mumbai are perfectly modern cities. We are talking about rural areas. Lions are considered a vulnerable species. They're facing threats from running into humans, their prey dying out, habitat loss, poaching, and climate change. It's Liger time! Yippee! The Liger is the child of a male lion and a female tiger. There's also the Tigon, whose parents are a male tiger and a female lion. The Liger is believed to be the biggest living cat, with one in Wisconsin named Nook having been recorded at 1,200 pounds. There is no recorded instance of a Liger being made in the wild, and there are only around 100 of them in the world right now. The breeding of Ligers is decreasing due to concerns about their health. Hybrid animals like Ligers and Tigons are very prone to health issues. This is because when you mix DNA from two different species, things don't always go together right. There are other hybrids between members of Panthera as well. They include things like the Leopon and the Jaglion. Hybrids are thought to happen exclusively in captivity. Some are bred to be an attraction for a zoo, and some happen accidentally when different species are left together in captivity. <laughs> Lastly, we got the tiger. Tigers are the largest natural big cat. It is possible that if you look over the whole species of the average size, though, lions could be slightly bigger. Similar to the leopard versus snow leopard discussions, lions have a more uniform size due to having just two subspecies, while tigers have six and live in a wide range of environments. They live up to 15 years in the wild and into the mid-20s in captivity. Tigers largely eat big herbivores like deer, boar, and buffalo. They've also been known to eat things like monkeys, leopards, bears, and even crocodiles. However, tigers are not known to enjoy sugary cereal. In fact, cats of all kinds have little to no ability to taste sweetness. Tigers 
colors can range from the small female Sumatran tiger weighing 165 pounds to the large male Siberian tiger being close to 700 pounds and being 10 feet long. One Siberian tiger named Jaipur was 10 foot 11 inches long and 932 pounds. Their habitat ranges from India to Southeast Asia up through China to Siberia. Let's start with the Bengal tiger. They live in India, Nepal, Bangladesh, China, and Bhutan. They're the most common tiger. They are the kind of default tiger that you think of when you think of a tiger. It is also what Sher Khan and Richard Parker would have been. The Sumatran tiger lives in Sumatra. They are the smallest of the living subspecies. It is believed that their smallness is due to what is called insular dwarfism. This is a phenomenon that has been observed where large animals that live on an island will get smaller over generations. Sumatra is also home to the smallest rhino, which is just called the Sumatran rhino. Next up is the Indo-Chinese tiger and the Malayan tiger. They both live in Southeast Asia and they are very similar except the Malayan tiger is a little smaller. They are a darker orange than the other tigers as well. Next up, we have the South China tiger, which may be the most likely big cat to go extinct, aside from maybe the Amur leopard. It is believed to already be extinct in the wild, and there are only about 200 left in captivity. Last, we have the Siberian tiger. It is the largest subspecies and lives mostly in the east coast of Russia. These tigers have been known to drag brown bears out of their dens during hibernation to eat them. The tiger's stripes play the same role as the rosettes we talked about earlier. The stripes break up their form and make them harder to spot in the tall grass. White tigers are the result of a mutation and are not albino. It is actually a very rare mutation that only 0.001% of tigers carry. That means that more than likely every white tiger you have ever seen is inbred. Everyone had them on their binder because they thought they were magical when really they were the cat version of Charles II of Spain. Somewhere around 55 people are killed by tigers each year. There is a place along the India-Bangladesh border called Sundarbans, which is where a significant amount of those attacks happen. It is a mangrove area that has about 100 Bengal tigers living in it. Prior to the 1980s, the tigers there regularly killed over 20 people a year. Sometimes more than 60 deaths were recorded in the area. Strangely, the tigers were not sick and seemed to just view humans as prey, just like any other animal. Fishermen have even been attacked on their boats by the tigers that swam out to them. The attacks have gone down over over the years though, thanks to new management techniques like radio tracking. Tigers as a whole are considered endangered and subspecies like the South China tiger are critically endangered. A main issue for tigers is that so many of them have been captured to be kept in captivity. There are 4,000 to 5,000 tigers in the wild and 5,000 tigers in Texas. There are also believed to be 8,000 in captivity in Asia and about 1,600 in Europe. They also face threats from habitat loss, climate change, and traditional medicine. Something to remember after this video is that predators like big cats can be dangerous, but it's also dangerous to let them die. Without predators to help control the population of herbivores, their populations can get out of control and it can cause damage to the environment. It can even lead to the herbivores starving to death or experiencing pandemics. Well, that's all I have for you. Hope you have a good day and eat something good.